um, a few capacitors. Everybody got the right sheet. We have two sheets we're going to go over today. Sheet number one, Chris should start with uh, April 2nd, I think, uh, or May 2nd, 05, 02, 05, 02. Okay, 12. We're ahead of the schedule. Okay, everybody got this sheet, guys? Um, this sheet is just a quick review, <clears throat> Chris, of correcting power factor like we did. We do correct power factor. I told you guys uh, yesterday, no, the, way, the day before. We correct power factor at two levels, Ashley. Level number one, the cheapest, you correct them. Uh, level number two is called the main correction. Cheaper, you correct right in here. Can you guys see that right at the surface? If you have a 4,000 amp switch gear, you can correct right at the switch gear. We do it here at Dunwoody Down, bank of capacitors down there. That's the cheapest. The more expensive and the more accurate correction and the better correction is to correct right at the offender level. The best correction is to go down to the offenders, Chris, and correct for them. And I told you guys, rule of thumb, rule of thumb, don't hold me accountable to it. Michelle Cooley might do it differently. If you have a machine that has 15 horsepower or more, 15 horsepower or more, three fares, you stick a capacitor right next to the machine to correct the power factor, right at the offender level. Can I just get you to understand there are two ways of correcting them, right at the offender level or right at the main service entrance equipment level? Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We got it. Tell my friend. Okay. We can correct in two ways. We can either add a centerless machine right at the, at the service, highly unlikely, usually capacitors, or we can add a synchronous machine right in this. Usually synchronous machine, you don't add them to the offenders. You put them right at the bus right here. So you can add synchronous machines, or you can add a bank of capacitor. Typically, typically, we have a bank of capacitor with the motors if we do it this way. And if we do it right at the service, we have a bank of capacitors. Um, we have a synchronous motor. When would I use a synchronous motor, guys? I use a synchronous motor. Um, if, if I have a mechanical equipment panel and I want to correct right at the level of the mechanical equipment panel, no, not at the offenders, not at the main, right in between, right at the bus, that's a good example where you use a synchronous machine. Can you guys see where the bus is right in here, where they put these two synchronous machines to correct the power factor right at the feeder level, at the feeder level? You correct power factor most of the time if you have a power factor 90 or less. If you have a 90 or more, Chris, leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Less than 90, less than 90, you start correcting power factor. Everybody got that one, guys? Correcting power factor at these levels? Is the choice between synchronous and the capacitor itself an economic choice? I really don't know. What, I, what I'm familiar with, to tell you the truth, is what we did in Westworth treatment plants is we add, I'm sure synchronous machines are more expensive, if you ask. Uh, if I have to guess, synchronous machine will be more. Uh, a bank, a bank of capacitor is the typical that we do either at the offender level or at the main level. Bank of capacitors. When you do it at the offender, you have two different uh, schemes there. One is, one is, yeah, before, the one right in here and one right where I'm showing. Typically, you put it, you feed it on the load side of the overcapacitor device, like we showed yesterday. Okay. Why? Yeah, the overload. Why? Because then you can turn it on and off with the machine. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to turn it on and off with the machine. I'm not showing the controller here. Good point. The controller will be right in here, guys, where you can turn it on and off. So if the this offender is on, <clears throat> the 15 horsepower motor is on, the capacitor is on. You turn it off, the capacitor off. And Dustin, do you guys know why we have to turn the capacitor? Why it's a good idea to turn the capacitor off? If you turn the motor off and you keep the capacitor on, guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up with a leading power factor. Who cares? High voltage. High voltage is as bad as, as low voltage. Any question, guys, about this slide before we move into our example of number one for the power correction? What would be the point of doing it? What would be the point of paralleling the water here? So on the lower right hand corner of your diagram, you've got a protection device and a capacitor. Well, I'm assuming that's a capacitor. Yep. Yep. As opposed to putting it in line. In the load side? Yeah. If you, 
Uh, oh boy. Um, well, if you have uh, if you have a short circuit right now in the capacitor, what's going to happen to this overconfliction device? That's a disadvantage. If you put the overconfliction for the capacitor on its own, you is disconnect. If you have a short circuit or not, your motor is going to is going to survive. So there's survivability issues. Good point, though. Um, okay, power factor. Here's what I have. I have uh, example number one, guys. I'm going to use the color green because I don't have green. I have a power, I have an appearance power of 900 kVm, a true power measured of um, 50 kW. I need, <clears throat> and I need to find the power factor. Um, I need to find the power factor for this system. Cool? I need to find the power factor for this system. So that's uh, step number one is I need to find my power factor for this system. Um, so, so for A and B, let me orient myself here. Okay, the capacitor. So we need power factor system example. Okay. Why do I have system when we resize the power factor? I think I'm having my okay, there you go. Now we're safe. Okay, so this this is just example. This is just example guys to do the power factor triangle before we go. Um, here is 900 kVA, uh, 900 kVA, 500 kVA. I need to find the two things. I need to find the reactive power, and I need to find the power factor. The reactive power press piece of cake. If you guys come over here and you take the 900, square it, minus it from. This is the rule for finding the reactive power. Minus this one from 500, right? 500 square. And if you guys do the math on this baby, you should be able to, where's anybody did the math on that? You should be able to find 748 K var. This is the amount of K var in your system. This is the amount of K var in your system. The amount of K var in your system. So the example number one, what I'm asking you guys to do here, I'm giving you the true power, the, uh, the apparent power, the true power, and I'm asking to find the power factor and the apparent power, the reactive power, the power factor and the reactive power. Okay, the power factor, how do we find the power factor here? We, we take the 500 K, divide this one by 900 K, and that will get you a healthy, where's my healthy? 56%. I have a nasty power factor of 56%. Any question, this should get you three things. Number one, should you to understand what the power triangle looks like. Where do you put the true power? Right here. Where do you put the apparent power at the top here? Where do you put the reactive power? And should get you the, the formula, guys, of finding the, the ability to find the reactive power as well as the power factor. Before I leave this slide, does anybody... Anybody does not understand how to, to find the reactive power and the power factor from this example. If you are given, you guys are given the apparent power and the true power. If you have the apparent power and the true power, I'm asking you to find the reactive power and the power factor. That's simple. Any question about the power triangle? Any question about the power triangle, basically? Power triangle. Any question about power triangle? Cool. The green is the only thing they added right here. So I have power factor and reactive power. I found two things, power factor and reactive power. If you go to this second slide, guys, the second slide, here's what I did for second slide. Second slide, I, I'm going to use, uh, which color did I use here? The black. I'm going to use black here. Black, 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 right? Uh, correct. Correct for a hundred percent power factor. I'm asking you correct for a hundred percent power factor. Correct for a hundred percent power factor. How do you correct for a hundred percent power factor? How do you correct for a hundred percent power factor? Ashley, how do you guys correct for a hundred percent power factor? What do you do to the K bar? Anybody? If you want to correct, if you remember, yes, you want to get your k-bar to be zero. 
I have 748 kVar. If I want to make 100% power factor, what do I do that to the kVar? Count, balance it. How do you balance it? You add this amount of capacitance. So that's what we did here. We're adding, I have, here's what the existing, this is my existing kVar. I need to correct to a 100% power factor just for the exercise, not that you do that. Then what I need to do, guys, is I need to add a capacitor. I need to size a capacitor. I need to size a capacitor of 748 K bar to correct the power factor to 100%. So then, press. what happened then, if you guys can see it, then the, look at this becomes your power triangle. Can you see your power triangle? The true power uh, and the appearance power, the true power and the appearance power are equal, right? The true power and the appearance power are equal. So what do you do? Then you take the 500K divided by 500K, and what do you get this one? One, and what does one mean? One means 100% power factor. So if I ask you in an exercise, guys, correct to 100% power factor, this in reality means find the KVAR of the system, and add the equivalent to this k bar in capacitive reactants. So you want 100% which is zero, but really in reality. No, we don't do that in reality. No, this is just 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 the process. Just the process. You're absolutely right. You would do, do you wouldn't do that in, in reality. Right. So we correct to 100% power factor. We correct to 100% power factor. So if you want to apply the power factor triangle, guys. Um, then the triangle becomes, I'm going to put it right in here, if you take the 748 minus uh, another 748, that will equal big fat zero. So this is, what I've done, Chris, is I grabbed 746 of inductive reactants and I added to it capacitive reactants of 740. 48, 748. So what do they do to each other? Completely neutralize each other. Can I get you guys to look at this and this triangle and tell me it's not a triangle. It's a one line right now. Just straight line. Can you, can you, can everybody understand if you have a true power factor, your appearance power and your true power are going to be a line, one line, and they will be equal. So it's like the, <clears throat> that triangle guys that keeps going down as you correct the power factor keeps going down and down until eventually the true power and the appearance power become equal. Any question about the power factor? Correction to 100%. 100% is easy. Means just find the appearance power of the system, the appearance power of the system. Okay, let's go guys to the second, second example. Uh, Morning, bud. Morning. Let's take the second example. This is where we're going to do some exercise on that one. Um, okay, Chris. Here's an example. I have a switch gear. I have my switch gear bought from Square D. My switch gear is a thousand amp. The the voltage is 480, and the power factor of the system. I measured the power factor. It's 80 percent. 80%. Cool. Everybody can see what we have. We have a switch gear with an 80% power factor. The amp and the voltage are given. Everything's three phase. We don't mess with single phase. Everything three phase here. And I need to correct to 97% power factor. I need to correct to 97% power factor. Now, Phil, to correct to 97% power factor, I need to add a cap, a capacitor bank. They call it capacitor bank. Now, Chris, this is correcting at the switch gear level. So I'm going to correct, add a capacitor band. When I add a capacitor band, guys, I need first to find the capacitor size. What size capacitor do I need? Second, I need to bring a branch, conduit and wire, connect it to a fused disconnect, and size the, con the wire and the conduit. We're not going to do the conduit, but the cable, the feeder, to the capacitor, as well as the fused disconnect to that feeder. Everybody know what we're doing here? We have a switch gear. We went down to, did we tour Dunwoody? Did you guys tour Dunwoody? You didn't tour Dunwoody yet. I have to give you a tour. We went down to our switch gear in the vault. We measured the amps and the voltage, average amps, usually average amps over different seasons and different um, times of the day. 
Um, and we measure the power factor, nasty power factor, 80%. So I need to correct this one to 97%. The question would be, find the capacitor that you can correct to a 90%. And when you find it, go plug it into the switch gear and size the disconnect and the fuse to plug it into the, disconnect, to the switch gear. To plug it into the switch gear. Okay, any question guys, any comments? Any questions, any comments? Before we go ahead and start sizing. Any question what we need to do? Yes, no? Okay, so we need to correct the power factor. Step, so I have a couple of steps that you guys need to, to go over. Step number one, Step number one, guys, is si capacitor size. I need to come up with physical mechanical size of the capacitor. Physical mechanical size of the capacitor. To do this, you need to find the true power. And to find the true power, guys, you take the 1.73, right? Multiply this by the voltage, 480. Multiply it by the current, 1,000. Multiply it by the existing power factor. What was the existing power factor? 40, right? Any question guys about this? The existing power factor, 0.8? Okay, so if you do the math on this, and write everything new is in green, in, uh, in uh, black. So 664 kW. So I have 664 kW, 664 kW. So step number one is to find capacitor size, uh, to size the capacitor. So find the kW, find the kW. Any question guys about this, finding the KW? Piece of cake, finding the KW is piece of cake. The true power is the KW, okay? Step number two, my friends, is you're gonna take, <clears throat> based on 80%, 80%, you're gonna take the following, guys. Power factor original equal 80%. I need to correct. Correct, correct it. I need to correct to 90, 95%, 97%, okay? 97% power factor. Um, then, based on these guys, you're going to take these two to, uh, let's go to which chapter? We're going to go take it to the table that we were using, not yesterday, the day before. If you guys go to chapter 11, to that table, they told yes the famous nice looking table. Okay, if you guys go to page, um, so the, you, you need to go to page 193. So electrical, wiring, industrial, page 193. You need to take <clears throat> from an original power factor of 80 to a corrected power factor of 97, we need to find the multiplier, M. If you guys go there, M multiplier equal, based on these, everybody can see that table? Based on the original power factor, the corrected power factor, like we did not yesterday, the day before, based on these two, you're gonna find a multiplier of <clears throat> point four <clears throat> nine nine. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Any question, guys, about finding that multiplier from the table? Now, Chris, I know you did an Excel sheet that does all this calculation. No problem. You don't need the multiplier. <clears throat> Any question, guys, about finding the multiplier from this page? 193. Page 193. Table 11. Let's just put the table to. Table number 11-1. 11-1, right? We used it <clears throat> day before. <clears throat> I have a problem. Any question, guys, about finding the multiplier? So step one, find the KW. Step two, find the multiplier. We're going to find the KW and we're going to find the multiplier to size the, to size the capacitor. We're going to go to step number three and four, and then after four, we're done with sizing our capacitor. The actual K, K bar size. Any question guys about this? Yes, sir. It's a, a no, not in NEC. So, so when for on testing purposes, for testing purposes, either I have it scanned or you guys, I'll ask you uh, 
to go there for testing purposes. Uh, the same table, guys, is also available in um, Dewalt. Uh, I thought we did it. What was it? Uh, well, as long as we don't go past certain. Um, yeah, they don't go that far. Yeah, it's page. If you guys go to Dewalt 1 12, Dewalt also in, in 1 12 will get you the same table. You can go to the bar and cry at any time. Thank you. Can I have a thumbs up that step one and two are okay? Cool. Let's go to step three. Step three, my friends, to size it. Then I wrote the formula. You guys have the same formula that I'm, I'm looking at here, the same um, calculation. So step number three, then you take... William, my friend, you're going to take the multiplier that we just found and multiply it by the KW. Simplify it. So my multiplier is 0.499. Multiply this baby by 664KW. And guess what you're going to get? You're going to get 331K bar. Now we change, we change it into K bar. On the test, when you multiply by M, the answer will change from KW into K what? Now we move from KW to K bar. Now we're talking K bar. Inductive reactance. We move into the K bar. Uh, this particular one, we no, up to this point, what we it, yeah, we're sizing the capacitive reactance that we need for the system. Yep, yeah, it's gonna be the capacitive, the equivalent of the capacitive reactance. You're right. Okay, so step number four, my friends, is we need to take, um, we need to take, let's just close my email, keep popping up here. You guys keep answering my emails. You answer emails at night, not here. Okay. Um, all right, so let's, um, let's go to step four. Step four, guys, is, is find the actual sizes. The actual size of the capacitors, either you're going to go research it on the industry, find the right right capacitors, or there's a few sizes that we go go by. Uh, did I tell you guys? Um, okay. Um, do me a favor. For actual sizes. So we're going to do the actual size of the capacitor. We're going to take the 300, 300, oops, 331. We're going to take them, guys, to, um, let's take them first to table, just the ones that we have here. Um, page electrical, wiring industrial, page, let's take it to page uh, 11, page, what is it, Chad? Page, 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 page 196, page 196, table number 11 dash. 11-3. Thank you. Okay. I want you guys to pay attention to what I'm going to say right now. You're going to take this value to this table. If the value exceeds the table, then use multiples of 100 as a standard because we're not going to go research what they're doing. Uh, use it as a rule of thumb, multiples of 100. So what's the next standard? If, now, can I have, does this exceed the table that we have, guys? Yep, because the table goes up to 125 here. After that, you have to go to, to the manufacturer product and find the exact size. To make it easy for all of us, for the sake of calculation, we're going to use multiple of 100, which is not far away from the truth. So what's the next standard? From 331, 400. So my next standard is going to be a 400 K bar cap. Can you guys write, please, write yourself a note? After that, use multiples of a hundred. After, if it doesn't, if it exceeds that table, just a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, and so forth. Just for the sake of the calculation. So, Phil, if I have five fifty, the next standard will be six hundred. If I have um, seven twenty three, next standard will be eight hundred. Any question, guys, about the 400 kVR? So we bought ourselves a 400 kVR capacitor. 
In real life, if you go work for Mashad Puri, you're going to go and find the actual size from whoever is making the capacitors and get that size and size your conductor based on that size. Any questions guys about the 400? Cool? All right, so that's step number four. So what size, uh, um, William, my friend, what size capacitor we need to buy? 400. We need to buy 400. Okay, now we size the capacitor 400. The next, guys, we know what the capacitor size. Next, we need to grab that baby, mount that capacitor on the floor, um, right, or against the wall, and wire that baby. We need to wire it. You guys remember what we need to wire it? Number two was the capacitor feeder. We need a capacitor feeder. Because you can't wire it without a feeder. You don't wire wireless. I don't even care. Wire wireless. Okay, so let's go wire. Um, the first thing we need to do is find IC. IC, guys, remember that 400K, divide this by 1.73, divided by the voltage system 480, and that will get you press 482 amps. So this is my capacitive current, my capacitive current. The current that the capacitor is going to be consuming. Capacitive current, that's not really, it's a it's it, capacitive current. It's not, um, um, it, 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 it's coming out of the capacitive reactants, not true power. Okay, so that's 482 amps. So 482 amps, that's step number one. Step number two, guys, you need to go to... 1.35 multiply this 1.35 by 482 and that will get you a healthy 651 amps now the question question that always tell me where did the heck did you get this one chad this multiplier that you're looking at is coming from article 460.8a if you guys go to article 460.8a, it tells you size the feeder for the capacitor based on 1.35. Now 1.25, 1.35. Any question where this multiplier came to be? 1.35, 1.35. 1 so I, I got my 1.35 multiplied by uh, 482, got my uh, 651, my 651. The last step, guys, if you guys remember, I, I need my 651 divided by 2, right? I divide this by 2. Why do I divide it by 2? Because if you remember, I told you the rule, if you have 400 amps or higher, what do you do? Parallel. So we parallel them. So I have 326 amps. And then if you take this baby to 310.15, B16, and this is a cable, under 75 degree column, that will get you the following. You're gonna end up with two sets of, uh, how many conductors, guys? Three conductors, each one of them is what? 400 KCM. Two, two sets of three conductors, each one of them is 400 KCM. Any question? If we derive the answer from real math rather than table, is that all right? That's fine. Do you give them up with the same answer or different? No, it's quite a bit lower. Lower? That which one is the lower? Uh, the cap needed. Because I calculated based on the farad value of the capacitor in order to derive the uh, I don't I wouldn't use farad. I would use I would not use farad. I would. I've never seen a capacitor. Yeah. Um, you yeah, never so worked in the power. In, you never worked in the power industry, man. Mm -hmm. If you worked in the power industry, you probably have seen it. Mm. So. so they, if, don't, they don't have values. They have a a, a farad value, mm -hmm. but we size them based on kvar. Mm -hmm. So. So well, size based on kvar. If you use the capacitive value, then you can derive the current. I wouldn't go that route. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I wouldn't go that route. Okay, any question, guys, about the two sets of, uh, of, of three, why three conductors? Three phase, do I need neutral? No, no need for neutral. So what I can do, guys, here, so what we're doing is, here's my phase A, phase B, phase C. Oops, let's just use, uh, make them like capacitor looking. So I have my capacitor one, capacitor two, Capacitor three tied all together from one side and from this side 
they're going to phase A, phase B, and phase C, and all these is in big fat box. That's what you're looking at. Three phase capacitor, three phase capacitor thing. One side they time together as a Y. Can you guys see they're making a Y? And the, each one of these could be a band, a set of capacitors, not just one. Multiple capacitors in series in parallel to achieve the, um, uh, the third that they're looking for. Any question guys about sizing the conductor? Okay, so we size the conductor. Now we can send our electricians to go install it. Which is the supply side of the diagram? Uh, the supply side of the diagram is right in here. We're bringing power to the cap. Supplying it. All right, let's go to the cab over cam protection device. Now we're going to size guys the over cam protection device, which is a fuse or circuit breaker. Cab over cam protection device, uh, press my friend, we're going to use the same multiplier 1.35 times um, 482. It's going to get, get up with 651 amp. Okay, you're going to take the 651 amp. To table which table? 240.6, and you're going to end up with 600 amp. And if it's not a standard, what do you do? You're going to go down, and because you guys are going to ask me where the heck did you come up with, with this, this is coming from the following. If you guys go to 460.8b and also CSK, can you guys write yourself a note? That multiplier, if you guys go to the same multiplier, if you guys go to uh, 460.8B, if you go to B crest, it will tell you the overcurrent protection device actually must be sized as low as practical or possible. So you want it as low as possible. They don't tell you how to size it as low as possible. That's why I put CSK is my initials right next to it. So what I usually do, I size it to match the overcurrent to, to match the conductor. That's what I do, size it to match the conductor, because I'm protecting my conductor. So how this is how we size the conductor, 1.35, multiply by this. But instead of going up, because they say as low as possible, I went down. So please put the CSK here, it's an opinion. There is some opinion here in it, because the code doesn't say exactly what you want it to do. Any question? So we size the conductor based 135, and the overcompetition device based of 135. Piece of cake, huh? But can I get you guys to understand that we went down? We didn't go to 700. We went down because we're trying to protect our conductors. Trying to protect our conductors. And if you remember, Chris, our conductors were sized by 6, 651, and I'm having an overhead protection by 600. Am I protecting my conductors? Yeah, no problem, Chip. If I go to 700, then my conductors are not protected. Well, they might not be protected. Up to 800 will be, but if you go higher than that, they're not protected. The last one, the disconnect. The capacitor disconnect, guys, I use the same rule. Make it simple, same rule. 1.7, oops, 1.35, 1.35, multiply it by the same capacitor current, 482, and 651 amp. Now, you're going to take your 651 amp, take this one to the wall. You guys remember which one? 3 12 press. And if you go there, if it's not a standard disconnect, you're going to go to the next standard disconnect. What's the next standard disconnect? 800 amp. So your disconnect is going to be 800 amp. You need an 800 amp disconnect, but a fuse of 600. Can a 600 amp fuse fit an 800 amp disconnect? Yep. They want the disconnect actually to be high because if somebody like yourself doing maintenance and electri electrical work and go and disconnect the capacitor energized, they want the disconnect to be able to handle the interruption of the current for that capacitor. The interruption of that current for that capacitor. Okay, as always, where did this multiplier came to be? This multiplier guys came to be from 460.8C press. If you go to 460.8c, it will tell you for disconnect. Now that tells you, that's not opinion. It tells you, please multiply it by 1.35. 1.35.
Any question? Any question, guys, about this? Okay, I'm going to give you five minutes, and I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to switch to the next sheet. Same calculation. We're going to keep doing, and we're going to do one more example like this one, guys, and two, please, um, two or three more examples for motors, size-based motors. Let's take five minutes break. Let's go ahead, guys, and start, please. Finish that one. Can you guys grab the second sheet that I gave to you? <clears throat> Looks like this. Second sheet. This time, Chris, <clears throat> we're going to correct the power factor at the offender level. Uh, I gave you should be there. I don't have any. Yeah, I put them there. Uh, we're going to correct at the offender level. <clears throat> so, so, are you guys uh, ready? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do, guys, we're going to correct at the offender level this time. We did correct at the switch gear level, and we know how to do that with a multiplier. I have a couple of examples about correcting at the offender level. The first thing I would like you guys to change is the page number here, because that was from last year's page number. The page number for this uh, <clears throat> version is 194. Can you please change this one to 194? So this should be page 194. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We do have a 350 horsepower, 350 horsepower motor, and the motor is running its U-frame, given as a U-frame, three-phase 480, and we need to correct the power factor from 90, between 93 to 97. We, we need, basically, we need to install this and immediately come up with a capacitor sized right next to it um, that can give me, <clears throat> Chris, can give me a correction between 93 and 97. Let me repeat myself one more time. Before you install the equipment, you go and you ask, what is the horsepower in this equipment? 350. I, I know this is an induction motor, so it's going to create a bad power factor in my system. I need to correct the power factor right at the offender level. So from the get go, before you install the machine, you go to this table and you size the capacitor that you're going to attach it to this machine. And in this case, I want you guys to do it by sizing also. We have first to find the capacitor, number one. Number two, we need to find the conductor. Three is the fuse and four is the disconnect. One more time. We need to find first size the capacitor for this motor that tied to it at the offender level, and then the fuse, the, disc, the, the feeder, the fuse, and the disconnect. Any question about what we need to do? What's the, what's the original power factor of this? What is the original power factor? Typically, guys, motor 350 horsepower, these will be running around 80% power factor, but I really care less. The table that we're gonna be using, care less about the, what the original power factor. Right? We, correct, we care about what's the corrective power factor. I want to correct between these two. So if I choose this size of a capacitor right now, it will actually guarantee, oh, well, nothing is guaranteed, but will most likely guarantee me 93 to 97% power factor out of this package. So Chris, this is, becomes a package that you buy right in here. Okay? Out of this package, when you buy them, um, you're guaranteed almost um, a power factor of <clears throat> a power factor of 93% out of the whole package. Any question guys about correcting at the offender level? Okay, let's go correct. So what, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to size these four things. Supposed to size these four things. First, the standard size of the capacitor. Second, the feeder. Third, the overcompetition device. Fourth, the disconnect. Okay, let's go do that. If I know where my mouse went, did we freeze? Okay, that'll be interesting. Wow. Freeze. 
Where is the break time? My computer is taking his break now. Okay, here you go. Wow. Okay. So let's... Um... All right. So let's go, guys, and start sizing. The first thing I would like you to do, please, go to page uh, 194. 190... Did I say 190? You said 194. 194, yep. Go to page 194 and let's size the capacitor. Can you guys grab this uh, 194 U frame? And I'm looking at a speed. Typically, if you're not giving the speed, guys, typically 1800 RPM. Uh, I think, did I, did I specify the speed for this at the beginning? I can't remember. Um, I didn't specify the speed. On a test, I will tell you what the speed is. Otherwise, it will be hard. So I specify <clears throat> the speed. 1800 RPM, based on 350, 480, U-frame, 1800 RPM, my capacitor size, Chris, should be what? Thank you. Based on this, if you take this one too, uh, electrical wiring industrial, page 194, table, what table is that? Table 11, dash 12. If you guys take this one there, you're going to end up with a healthy 60K bar. Now, <clears throat> now um, Jackson, my friend, no M, no multiplication, nothing. At the offender level, you just, from this table, all these M factor and original power factor factored into the table. It gives you directly uh, a size. Now, Chris, if you want to go use your Excel to find the KW from the horsepower and the efficiency of the horsepower, and the, power, the efficiency, and then find the KW. That's how we find the KW, right? You find the KW. Um, well, you actually, yeah, you have, find the KW. All what you need is the efficiency now. If you know what the efficiency of the motor, you find the KW, then you continue doing what the same example that we did before. We're not going to do that. Directly from the table, we're going to find uh, 60. Any question is how we found 60? So for the test, William, I'm going to give you this information. You're going to go to the same table. I might change, I will change the horsepower or the speed or the voltage, and you just go directly and pick up the actual size. Any comments, any questions, guys, how to find it? Okay, seems you're good. Let's go to the next. Then the rest is piece of cake. The rest of it, guys, piece of cake. Now we're going to find, the, do the calculation. So you're going to take the 60K divided by 1.73 times 480. And that's when you're going to end up with 72 amps. You end up with 72 amps. And then, you guys remember how we, then you're going to use 1.35. And this magic number is coming from uh, 460.38, right? Multiply it by 72. And that will get me a healthy 97 amps. Dustin, remember what you and I talked about this morning, 97? This is less than 100. Should I go to the 60 degree column? No. Why? Because I'm dealing what with what? Three phase system. Three phase system, 99% of the time, the lugs on them are rated for 75. Okay, so you don't have to, to go. Okay, so then, then you're going to take the 70, oops, 97 amp. Take this one to 310.15 D16 under 75 degree column. If you guys go to there, <clears throat> you're going to end up with three conductors. Each one of them is number three, A, W, G. And the insulation is T, H, H, N, or approved for the location, or approved for the location. What location is going to be THHW? Typically indoor, typically it's going to be THHN. Did we do the math right on the 97? You guys go to seven, table 310.15 P16, it should come up with. Now, Nick, I don't go to 60 degree. Had this been a single phase load, most likely based on the code, you're going to go directly because I don't know. Single phase load, it could be a log 60 based on 100 less. So I go to 60. When, when you size three phase equipment, guys, don't even think about 60. Always. You wouldn't find a 350 horsepower single phase motor. Yeah, yeah, but we're, we're sizing for the capacitor, though. These lugs will be for the capacitor. 
these lugs will be not on the more on the, the motor you're right there is no what is it 10 is the largest that you can get okay any question about a conductor William piece of cake let's go to the next one the next guys we're going to size the overcome friction device the same thing also piece of cake the overcome friction device um, the same multiplier 1.35 Three five, and this one coming from again this multiply this by seventy two. I like to repeat myself. You can see ninety seven amp. All right, and then you're gonna take your you're gonna take your ninety seven amps, take it to two forty dot six MEC, and this will get you a ninety amps. Why? Because I have to go down. And can you guys also put CSK here? Because that's also opinion. Opinion worth what you give, right? It's free, it's opinion is free. So if you go to a different company and they say, no, we're going to size it based on 100%, you size 100%. Yeah, Mr. Ben, because the code is not clear on it. As small as you can. You can size it 5 amps by one. Okay, disconnect, capacitor disconnect, guys, the same multiplier, piece of cake, 1.35, and this is also coming from 460.8C, 72 equal 97 amp, and now the only thing is we're going to take it to a different uh, 97 amp, we're going to take it to D volt, <clears throat> under 312, right? Next, 312, and you're going to end up with 100 amp. Can I fit 100 amp? Um, can I fit 90 amp fuse and 100 amp disconnect? No problem. Any question, guys? Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. We're doing good together. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Okay, if you guys look at the same size in the book, there is a table. Their sizing is slightly different from the manufacturer. Don't worry about that one. On the test, you're going to size it based on this. So. Okay, let's take one more example. If you look at page, uh, page 196, page 196 for the same capacitor, that we size, they are specifying a number two conductor and a number uh, 100 amp uh, fuse and a switch, oops, number, I'm sorry, 90, where, where am I here? Um, for 480, they're specifying a number two conductor, a 125 amp fuse and a disconnect to 200. I want you guys to do it this calculation. Unless you have a specific material from manufacturer that tells you otherwise, that's how we do it. Okay, let's go for another example. This example, my friends, um, any question guys about, about solving the capacitance, the power factor at the offender level? Any question? Let's take one more. Hopefully that will cement it. Let's take this one. This one, this time guys, I have a two-way and three phase, and I am doing the same thing. I have an offender and I want to buy a package so those offenders can solve the problem right at the offender level. 
I have I need to size the cab, the conductor, the overcome friction device, and the disconnect. And the disconnect. The only thing is I have a two eight volt three phase T frame motor and an eight hundred RPM, an eight hundred RPM system. Cool. So we go do that. I want to remind you that the voltage is different here. The voltage is different. That's the only thing. The voltage is different. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go ahead, guys, and find the, a couple of things for these. Okay, so we got these, got these cap size. The second, any question about what's needed here? I have a 2 8 system, and I need to size a capacitor at the 2 8 system, three phase. All right, the first thing we need to do, um, Nick, is we need to take the 200 horsepower motor at the 2 8 at T frame. At 800 RPM and find my multiplier. If you guys do that, <clears throat> if you can, I can't find your multiplier. Uh, where am I here, Chad? Okay, so we got that one. Cap size. What is it? 200. Two eight. Okay. So if you have, um, let me use which color I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this color. So if you guys take it to table number. What's the table that we're using here? Table number 11-2. Table number 11-2 from electrical wiring industrial page number 194, Chris? 194. If you guys go there, <clears throat> you're going to find, um, what's the size? Anybody there? Well, it's 33% larger, but it doesn't say larger than one. 50 kV bar. The first thing we need to do, uh, so if you go there, under the 208, there is no 208 there, but under the, the 1800 RPM, you find 50 kV bar. Cool? Then, the second thing, back to what Chris was saying, because, because voltage equal 208, you, you need to multiply, if you look at the notes, you need to multiply it by 1.33 multiplied by the size that you came up with here, the 50k VA. You need to multiply it by 50k VA, right? Because the voltage, this is you guys have to wake up here, because the voltage is 208, you can't just take the 50 and run with it. The 50 only is for 80 system. Only for a 480 system. If you look at the bottom of the table, it tells you if your voltage is 208, could you please do me a favor? Multiply your number that you came up with by 1.3, up it 33%. When you guys up it 33%, you're going to end up with 67 kV. You're going to end up with 67 kV. <clears throat> 67 kV is not a standard, so I have to go back again. Um, I need to take the 67 K bar, take it to table number 11, um, the one that has a standard in it, 11-3, yeah, electrical wiring industrial page number, page number, this one 96, 196, and if you go there first, you go to the next standard, and the next standard will give me seven zero. Uh, the first column. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. We're just using it as a guide. Yeah. Okay, so we have seventy. Can I get you guys to give me a thumbs up that we know how to go from 50 into 70, right? Thumbs up, no, yes. Phil, my friend. Cool. Tao, Ashley. Because the voltage is 208, the table is meant for 480. It's modified what a, for a, by a factor to get you the 208. What's that factor? 133. Um, don't ask me how they came up with that couple of calculations, and then you came up with 70 kVar. 
The minute that we got the seven k bar, then we're done. We can now run with it. We got the seven k bar, guys. We can run with it. Seventy k bar. Now the calculation is going to repeat itself. That's it. That's the only new step here. The only new step here. Any question? Okay, let's go ahead, guys, and size. This is just the capacitor size, right? We need to go size the, the conductors, the feeder. For this one, I need to use thread here to take be different. 70K divided by 1.73 times 208. Don't forget the system is 208 here. So that will give me first 195 amps. Healthy 195 amps. Now I'm gonna work, I'm not gonna work, write the reference is 1.35 times multiplied by 195 amps. Uh, that would get me, if you do that, 263 amps, right? And then the last step is you're gonna take the 263 amps, take them to table 3, 10.15, B16 under 75 degree column. If you guys go there, they'll give you three conductors. What number? <clears throat> number 300, KCM, T, H, H, N, or approved for the location. Or approved for the location. CHHW, right? Chris, did you calculator came up with? The amp calculator, not the capacitor calculator. Okay. What I did here, guys, I drew for you. When you bring it to the capacitor, the same thing. You see, I phase A, phase B, phase C, right? And um, and we need a ground, no neutral, a ground, no neutral. Three phase capacitor band, three phase transformers delta, motors Y. They don't need a neutral. There is no need for neutral. Any question is about sizing the cab feeder? Nothing. Nothing. It's like a motor, a delta, a Y motor. Exactly, like coil, coil, star. That, this, that what you're saying is, where does this star go, Chad? Nowhere. Can I ground the star? It's a whole different. Well, this is supposed to be zero. I'm to see how you how you pass how you uh, create potential across something with one connection. So this is not one connection. This is three phase system. You just said the bottom is connected to nothing. You've got a plate, a dielectric, and a plate. You have a set of three plates on the bottom. You have a voltage between these two points, right? No, there's no connection to that bottom. There's nothing. The reference to each other. A three-phase reference, no, reference point. We'll point. get to that one. I'm, I'm seeing three dielect. I'm seeing a dielectric se separated by one plate because you've commented out three. And the other one is not. Okay, we'll get into that one. What we care design was as a box. We bring the feeders and the disconnect to them. Okay, any question guys about this? About two. Okay, let's go find the overcome protection device. The overcome protection device, uh, my friends, is piece of okay. cake. The same thing, you take the 1.35, multiply this baby by um, 194. Don't forget it's going to be 264 amps. And if you take uh, the second step, it's going to be 264 amps. Take it to 240.6 um, and go down if it's not a standard. On this ship, manufacturers do otherwise. And that will be, your size will be 250. I'm going to go down to the disconnect, do the same thing, guys. Piece of cake, 1.35. Multiply it by the same thing, 194. Equal to 64 amp, 
Um, and then I need the standard one, oops, I need the two six, two six four amps, take it to DeWalt, three dash, uh, well, three dash 12, and that will get me a 400 amp, four, 400 amp disconnect, three phase 400 amp disconnect, three phase 400 amp disconnect. Any question? I, mean, I know I'm going to sneak uh, sneak a little bit peek here. I'll get back, 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 back. 70. Okay, bam. Bam. 70. 70. Okay, bam. The disconnect is the same. The fuse it went 300 amp and the conductor fall out. We use the conductor slightly different. Any question is, any question about this process? Piece of K, piece of K. Okay, any question guys about sizing capacitors? We can size the capacitors based on the offender, exactly like you have seen. Um, we did one for the voltage 480, we did one for the 28, and we did one right at the switch here. Any comments, any questions? Before we, so when we size all of them, I just wanna quick remind you of the reference in the code, article 460 guys. A quick remind you that we sized based on the offender. We have a disconnect, a fuse, and a feeder plus the cab itself. The cab might be slightly different if they are not standard cab guys. When you do a calculation, you're going to go through the tables in the in the book. If they are not in the table, because the table in the book goes up to 125, you're going to start using multiples of 100. Can I get you to remember that? Multi just for the sake of the calculation. Just for the sake of the calculation. I want to do one more example, guys, and then we'll let you go. One tiny little example. This one. Example number three. Example number three. I want to go directly at the offender level down to the motor and I'm going to feed cab into same disconnect fuse and down into my cab, my capacitor. Here's my capacitor bank and here's my Mr. Motor here. What I need you to do, guys, is uh, let's do it together. Let's use um, a T frame. T frame. With a T frame, I'm going to go, guys, and use a 100 horsepower motor. 100 horsepower. And let's just spice it up and make it 208 system. The system is 208 three phase. The system is 208 three phase. 2A 3 phase system, and I need to size the following. Let's follow the same criteria that we did before. Um, I will uh, first, I'm going to size number one, number two, number three, number four. This time, Chris, I would like to size number, I would like to size also the equipment grounding conductor. So I want to size the equipment grounding conductor right in here that eventually basically go here to the ground. This is a ground. I want to size the equipment grounding conductor. The equipment grounding conductor. Uh, equipment, this will be number five. Wait one second here, number five. Great. 
the RPM. Let's run these babies very slow. So let's run them at 600 horsepower. 600 horsepower. 600 horsepower. Okay, so that's our example, guys. So the first thing we need to size, um, number one, is cab. Cab size. So I need to size the capacitor for this system. The capacitor for this system. Is it 100 horsepower or 600 horsepower? 100 horsepower. 600 would, would take us way out of whack here. 100 horsepower. Gotcha. No, I'm looking at the bottom. It says 100. It says 600 horsepower. Uh, oh, that was the 600 R, P, and M. Thank you. Speed, RPM. Thank you. Okay, so if you take guys the following, you need to do the following. You need to take the horsepower at the voltage um, 208 at speed of 600 RPM, right? At I always use that frame of T frame. If you take all this to electrical wiring industrial cable number, cable number 11 dash 2, page number 194. 94. You guys go there, what's the size? I don't have the answer for this one. So, what's the size? 40. 45. Thank you. For T, that will be the answer will be 40, 45 K bar. Just a quick reminder on the test, if you put 45 only and you don't put K bar, that will be half a lit up half there. So you have to put 45 K bar. So I have 45 K bar. Thank you. We're not done yet. So because the voltage is 208, because the voltage is 208, because 208 voltage, you need to do one more step. Not a lot, not, not done yet. So what you need to do is you need to take the 45 and multiply it by 1.33. Press what do you get? 60. Okay, 60 K V A. Even? 60 K V A. Okay, so 60 K V A, guys, if you go to. Okay, so we have 60. We still need to. Come on, buddy, why don't you want to move here? There you go. The last step, guys, to go check if it's a standard or not. So I'm going to use 60, 60 K V A, take it to which table? Table number 3 now, 11-3. Uh, is this a standard basically? I'm trying to see, is 60 yeah. a standard? Yep, so 60 is standard. So we're going to stick with the 60, K V A. 60 is standard. Was it exactly 60, Chris? Okay. Uh, 59. Yep. 60. So we hit the jackpot basically. Otherwise, you go up. So I have a 60 kVA. That's it. That's the first, the hardest thing is to find a 60. Now, the next guys, we're going to do the calculation. This time, I add an, added, added an equivalent ground conductor though. Any question? Let me know when you guys are done. Phil, good. Jackson, William, Tao, Ashley. Okay. So let's go, guys, to the next step. The next step would be, as uh, we said, number two. Number two, cab feeder. The cab feeder, 1.35. First, you're going to help me with the cap. Oops. First, we need to find the conductor before we do anything else. Step number one, IC equal um, 60 K divide by 1.73 times 208. What would that answer for this? What's the M? 60K divided by 208, 1.73. Two gentlemen agree on one answer. Yep. 
No. I just want to remind you. 167. 167. Okay. So the second step, guys, is piece of cake. 1.35 multiplied by 167. Press. 225. 225 even? Yeah. Second? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, the third step is 225M. Take it to table 3. 10.15 B16 under 75 degree column. For that? Yes. How many? Three. Three conductors. Number four at A W G T H H M. Let me say four at the same. I don't know. Three number four at A W. Ask Mr. Ryman. He's expert with the Spanish language. <laughs> Three conductors number four at. A W G T H H M. Any question guys about this? So that's two. Let's go to three. Let me know if I can move. Am I going too fast, too slow? Really, it, we repeated all these steps. I just want to make one more, one more step before. Number three is the cab. Cab uh, over current protection device. Over current protection device, AKA fuse. Mr. Fuse. Same calculation, 1.35 times, now you guys have to tell me that. I should copy and paste it. Isn't that nice, copy and paste? 167 equal 225. <laughs> copy and paste. Copy and paste. That will be 160, 167 equal to 25 amp. Now piece of cake, Chad, a 225 amp goes to 2. 40.6 will give you another 225M, right? Usually we go down if it's if it's not a standard. In this case, we hit the jackpot. Number four, cab disconnect. The cab disconnect. Any question guys about overcompression device? Please, okay, we hit the jackpot. I'm not going to repeat the step. The first step, guys, will be. I would do 1.35 times 167 equal to 125 amp. The last one is take the 225 amp next to where? B wall 3 12. Right? 3 12. And that will get you a 300, no 400. So it's looking at 400. <clears throat> 400 amp disconnect. You're looking at a 400 amp disconnect. 400 amp disconnect. Any question? Four hundred amp disconnect. So this is typically what you're going to be guys sizing most of the time. Uh, when I worked for a short Elliott Hendrickson, we have a 15 amp, 15 horsepower horsepower. When we size it, right next to it, we size a capacitor that goes with it. Um, a lot of manufacturers of motor guys will help you with this calculation. These, you do them so you can look intelligent before you go talk to a, a vendor and say, do it for me. You do your calculation and then talk to the vendors and they tell you more or less and tell them, here's my calculation. And if they say, well, we used it, that's what we specify with our equipment, good to go. So, but you, you sound a little bit more intelligent, knowledgeable before you talk to the vendors. All the stuff that you guys do for us, including lighting, the vendors can do for you. But you sound more intelligent when you, if you know how to do it. Um, and you could be that vendor, as a matter of fact, that's doing it for other customers. You could be the guy that they hire you to size the capacitor for a company that does motors and so forth. Any question about sizing capacitors? So just to summarize, guys, we did size capacitors for switch gear at the level of the service entrance. And we size the capacitors at the level of the offenders, which is mainly motors. We can size um, 
capacitors at in between press. You can go to the in between level. Uh, you don't have to go to the main or to to the uh, motor. You can go somewhere, say the mechanical panel, and add a synchronous machine right at the mechanical panel. If you do the synchronous machine, if you are to size the synchronous machine, Ashley, the same process, the same calculation, except it becomes motor here. Up to this point, I usually don't do it. <clears throat> when we come, press, when we do the calculation, we came up with, um, well, usually you don't do a synchronous machine. You don't do a synchronous machine for a motor. That's, we don't do it. We do it for the whole system. So here's multiple machines tied to the same feeder. We have a synchronous machine that covers the whole system. So what you do is you, you do the first calculation that we did, guys, based on the amp and the voltage. Find how many kVar you want. And then <clears throat> I don't have a table that trends the kVar that you, you want to correct to a 90% power factor. There will be a table, I don't have it, that translates this kVar into equivalent horsepower synchronous motor. That's when you when you talk, you pick up the phone, you see that I need a synchronous motor that can get this voltage, 480, that can give me 200 kVar. And then there's a sheet with the people who sell them, tell you 200 kVar, no problem. Uh, Nick, it's, you're going to have, uh, let's just say, 50 horsepower uh, motor, synchronous motor. Then when you get the 50, then sizing the disconnect and the over temperature device, and the conductor for the horse the, for the motor becomes like any other motor, right? We know how to size guys disconnect and a fuse and a conductor and an overload for a motor. We've done that many times. They're not capacitors, they become a motor. So you treat them like a synchronous motor and you size the, the conductors 1.25, over temperature device 2.5, disconnect 1.15. Uh, overload uh, between 1.15 to 1.25, depending upon the temperature rise and so forth. Any question about capacitors? Okay, so that's that's um, our second topic, guys. Next week we're going to be testing on different thing. The second, um, as we move away from capacitor, guys, we're going to do later on. We're going to be doing grounding and bonding, complete. Calculation for grounding and bonding. I forgot one little thing, Chris, Nick. Now that I look at you, buddy. Anybody remember what we forgot? The green. the green boy. The green boy. Let's go size the green boy, number five, because number five is equipment grounding conductor. For equipment grounding conductor, guys, like any other equipment ground conductor, 225, you will go to table. Which table? Anybody remember? Table two. 50.12 and 2. So you're going to take the 225 amp, take it to table 250.122. Anybody can tell me I don't have the answer for that. From two, table 250.122, please. How many conductors first? One conductor. What size? It's going to be A, W, G. I dare to say number one, number, number two, number three, number three. Number three. So it's going to be right. Yeah. A second. Yeah. A second. Do I hear a second? Sorry, uh, no offense, William, but I need a second. Anybody second, William? I'm number four. What are we rating this? Based on two twenty-five oh, or higher. Yeah, like four. Number four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then number four. Now we have a second. T H H N. If it's in a conduit, it's going to be insulated or covered. That's it. So that's the equipment running conductor that goes with it. Neutral? No. Fuck that little hand one, Thirty five, thirty five. 
30. If you guys go to Color Hammer, suggested capacitor rating, number of poles, number of motors based on the speed, based on U frame. T frame, all of them are T, they don't have U because U is the old one. T frame, if you go to, you find tons of information, guys, from Cutler Hammer. Cutler Hammer, that will be, uh, the tab will be 35. You can find tons of information about the actual sizes um, and so forth. Sizes of capacitors for different motors. Cap. This is all cap sizes. Actual cap sizes they can sell you. And Chris, the notoriously famous table that you guys have in your book, right here also, in the, in the color hammer, plus the actual sizes that they have. They have different sizes for motors and different sizes, uh, wires. They also have, guys, another table, really nice if you want to go manufacture a product. If you go right here, they will tell you, if you have a capacitor, here's the size of the wire, here's the size of a disconnect, and here's also the size of the overcam protection device you can use. And all the stuff that Chad have done with you guys, you don't even have to listen to it. Is that the Eaton book or is there another one? Eaton, yeah, the Eaton book. The Cutler Hammer Eaton, yeah. Okay. It says Yep, it's the Cutler Hammer got absorbed, eaten. No, I'm looking for a book if I'm trying to find a book. Eaten, yep. Cutler Hammer, I don't find The ETM, Eaten. Can you eat eaten a piece of cake? Yes. Okay, any question guys about this? So these are all the standards, um, capacitors that you can find over there. They also go through Chris step-by-step uh, step how to do the motor power factor correction right in that sheet. What I like about the consulting uh, manual guys, or what do they call them, the consulting application guide, before they do the in, in, eat in Cutler Hammer, before they do the actual sizes, they walk you through how to do the process, unreal. So if, if, if I have an advice for you, my friends, when you graduate, take one of these with you. Um, they have a PDF file too. They have one. It's unreal. If you want to do a short circuit analysis, it's all summarized here. I, you know, this is a really nice guy to have. Okay, so that's all what I have for you guys. Any questions? What I'm going to do for the rest of the day, guys, I'm going to be swinging by around and help you place uh, power. Power, guys, you should be able to place your receptacles, no problem. Your panels, no problem. The only thing I would like to help you if you need help with the bus duct. There will be two bus ducts placed. Place the bus ducts with the disconnect next to the bus duct. Assign a voltage and a volt amp for the bus duct. For the disconnect, and circuit the disconnect to the bus duct. That's what I would like to show you. Um, the PDUs, you drop your PDUs that we have, guys. They're like any other panel. You put the receptacle and assign the receptacle to each PDU. That's it. Just receptacle, assign receptacle to PDU. These are the only mechanical equipment. For mechanical equipment, guys, you can first drop the mechanical equipment, like air handling unit or whatever, um, and then a, put a disconnect right next to it with a power and, and, and circuit the disconnect. Circuit the disconnect. So these are what we're going to be doing, um, and that's going to be helping you with. If you have not red line for light, please do so. Otherwise, you guys are going to be behind. Um, lights and risers okay that's it only the name of the equipment